What's up guys? Back with another educational video and this week we're talking about inflammation. Why I do it like that? Well, inflammation tends to be this thing that diet cultists use as kind of like their 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 Hail Mary. When studies don't show what they want them to show, they always come back but what about inflammation? I always find this funny because the research on inflammation is pretty clear that if you lose weight, in inflammatory markers go down. And if you gain weight, inflammatory markers go up. And that between diets, if you equate uh, calories and weight loss, uh, you don't really see much difference in inflammatory markers. I hear the strongest arguments for long-term uh, changes in inflammation from kind of the ketogenic diet group. They, I hear them say all the time, well, sugar is inflammatory and there's no way that you, you know, you can have carbohydrates and all that insulin and not be inflammatory because insulin is so inflammatory. Well, what's the data say? There was a study uh, by Rosenbaum et al. And they had uh, people in a metabolic ward where all the meals were provided for them. And they looked at a high carb, low fat diet versus a um, low carb, high fat diet. And it was a crossover design, so each person was kind of their own control. They found that actually the people who went on a ketogenic diet, their levels of inflammatory markers slightly increased. Now, it wasn't a big increase, and I don't want to oversell it like the ketogenic diet is just going to make you so inflammatory. That's, that's not how this stuff works, all right? But it did increase, even with calories equated. And even with, uh, uh, they actually lost uh, more weight in the ketogenic diet group, but it was from body water, not from fat. Sorry, ketogenic diet people. Um, it doesn't seem like the ketogenic diet is better for inflammatory markers. Now, the vegans are kind of on the other end of this, or, or plant-based zealots, or whatever you want to say. Every time I say plant-based or I say vegan, I get... I guess there's a difference. They both start getting angry at me. I don't really care. I'm not talking about all vegans. I'm not talking about all plant-based. I'm talking about zealots, all right? They tend to look at the postprandial markers of inflammation and make a big deal out of this. This was a big thing in, ga in the Game Changers. They talked about postprandial levels of inflammatory markers and how meat increases inflammatory markers postprandially, et cetera, et cetera. It turns out meat only increases inflammatory markers if you're talking about really fatty cuts of meat. If you're talking about lean meats, um, they don't increase inflammatory markers, or in a couple cases with lean or no fat uh, animal products, it actually decreases inflammatory markers. That being said, we don't know what short-term rises and falls in inflammatory markers really mean. In fact, it's very doubtful, in my opinion, that short-term changes in inflammation drive in any way disease and morbidity outcomes. I think it's the longer term uh, changes in inflammation that matter much, much more. Your, your acute changes, if that was the case, then something like exercise would be awful for us. Exercise increases your inflammatory markers uh, in the short term. But what do we see in the long term? We see a reduction in inflammatory markers with exercise. The other thing that people confuse with inflammation is they really don't understand the difference between systematic inflammation and localized inflammation. So if you get hit really hard on your leg and you get a bruise and it swells, that's inflammation. That doesn't cause inflammation somewhere else in your body. If you have some kind of GI disorder that causes you to have a lot of pain and swelling and sensitivity, that's inflammation in that area. It's not causing inflammation systemically. Systemic inflammation are the amounts of these inflammatory markers that circulate in our blood. And they seem to be more predictive of things like cardiovascular disease, possibly cancer, some other diseases. But one, localized versus systematic, are quite different. I even had people say that <laughs> when I injured my back a while back, uh, it was because I was eating sugar which was causing me to be inflamed and that's why I got injured. You don't understand how inflammation works. If you get injured, there is then an inflammatory response 
in response to the injury. It's not you become inflamed and then you get injured, it's you get injured and then there's inflammation in response to it. I hope this video has cleared up some of the misconceptions about inflammation and inflammation with regards to diet. At the end of the day, guys, if you're somebody who's overweight or obese, if you lose a significant amount of body weight, your inflammatory markers will go down regardless of the methodology you use to achieve that weight loss. If you're somebody who significantly increases your body fat level, regardless of the way you do it, you will increase your inflammatory markers. Now, we may discover uh, some diets that are a little bit better or a little bit worse. Maybe this is one piece of that puzzle. But for the most part, pick the diet that fits your lifestyle that you can stick to and be consistent with. All right, guys. Hope you liked the video. Click the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you next week.